All right, as part of the Tetris live stream, we're going to take apart some old computer hard drives to have a look what's in them, see what's different between these models, and so that I've got a bit more pure scrap aluminum to throw away at the metal recycling. So I've got normal old school Seagate drives, the good ones that have that cover on it so that it stays protected. I don't know why they stopped doing that. So several 80 gig drives, 120 gig drives, then more 120, more s newer Seagate drives, 80 gigs, 250 gigs, Western Digital drives, 160 gigs, uh, another type of Western Digital drive, 80 gigs, then we got Velociraptor drives, the original Western Digital Velociraptor or one of the original ones, 150 gig. That's, yeah, when I bought a new for my computer back in the day when this was a way to make your computer faster. And then we've got the 300 gig version. And then we've got the much newer one terabyte version, which you can put in your 2U server that has the vertical 2.5 inch drive holders. So these get pretty hot. And then some real exciting stuff. We've got the Seagate Cheetah 15,000 RPM SAS drives. So I want to see what's in there because these things are pretty heavy and they run very hot. Maybe the platters are quite small. Looks like it. That's interesting. Maybe the platters aren't much bigger than what you'd find in the 2.5 inch drive. All right, we'll do those shortly, but we'll start off with opening up some more generic drives. I've got this exciting and this drives always use the Torx bits. Hopefully this goes big enough. Yeah, it looks like it'll be T8. And they always hide some screw screws under the label on most hard drives just to make it annoying. So this one's the 250 gigabytes Western Digital. We will then open up the 500 gigabyte and see how different that is. Now there'll be a, a screw in there probably. Or there'll be something in there. Yep, there's a screw there. That'll be on the head actuator arm thing. And there might be one in the center. Nope. got that screw. Wow, it's really dusty. I think that it got dusty just when we opened it. And there's air cleaning stuff. There's a vent hole there with a filter and then that thing. Okay, let's take this 500 gig one off and see if that's any different. Yeah, it's about on the limit for this screwdriver because the handle is not very grippy or quite tight screws here. I need something to pry that open. Maybe this. Hmm, okay, 500 gigabyte drive versus Whatever I said that was, 80 or something. Pretty much the same. Very, very similar. Probably no different at all. Okay then. That's a pretty boring discovery then. Now you can get some quite strong magnets out of these drives, but I don't know if it's very useful. Yeah, that's on the other side. Ah, uh, the head actuator will have to get taken out probably. Let's have a look to see what's on the circuit board. The micron chip wind bond and a smooth chip smooth 
what that is. Possibly a motor driver since that's the pins there that join onto the motor. And then the head joins onto those contacts there, which they're tarnishing quite a bit. Which is a bit dodgy. And that would be the cache memory there. Does it? Ah yes. There's a parking area for the heads off to the side. So the heads park up there off the drive. Is there any single platter? That one's only a single platter too, the 500 gig drive. That uses a smaller screw. Yeah, I think you have to take the drive, the platters off as well. Okay, the next we'll get into some Seagate ones. Some of these drives might have glass platters, but I don't know, that might be only in 2.5 inch drives. I'm not sure. Better watch out for those because they can explode if you're not careful with them. Hard disk with lovely fingerprints on it now. And there's the head that read it. And the coil there which goes in this strong magnet. Pretty strong magnet which is useful for things if you need a strong magnet but it breaks very easily because it's a soft material so you've got to be careful with it and it's also strong so you have to be careful for that reason I don't know if you can get the motor out it looks like there is a small screw in the tip of it a really really small screw not one that I can I don't know is that a screw in the center there kind of looks like one but it didn't seem to fit. Maybe it's just a punched bit. In that case, that's probably it. Okay, well, we'll look inside the Seagate brand drive. See what that has to offer. There we go, a Seagate drive. Oh, this one's got two platters. Uh, what size was that? I threw away the lid. Anyway, what have we got? Got some 80 gig drives and a 120 gig. This will open that. We take off the C shield. Seems to have some kind of padding stuff on it. We're working our way up from the stink drives to the good drives. So we look in this Death Star next, and then we'll go on to the exciting Velociraptor drives. And yeah, special foam stuff. A bit less integrated. It must be an older drive. Oh. Wow, those screws are really tight. I can't get them off with that screwdriver. Anyway, we'll take the top off. That's another one with two platters. I think with this one you use a flat yeah, to undo the heads. It also looks like these don't park, like the the Western Digital drives had that parking area off the, off the disc, which keeps the heads safe so they don't smack together or bang into the disc surface. But these, they just seem to sit there. Uh, oh, they seem to lock. Lock in the center. I guess that's the landing zone is in the center of the disc. I think these... Yeah, the ones that when the disc starts spinning up, the wind pushes this lever over and that unlocks the head. And then it can move around. Very interesting, this drive, there's no head on the top. So this must be just a one-sided... Well, it's got two platters in it. I wonder if it still has a writable surface on it, even though they're not using it. Probably does just as a cost thing, just make all the discs the same, whether you use them or not. So perhaps that means it uses three sides. And there's that thing. Oh, maybe the head can land on that. Nope. Don't know what that is. Maybe it's just for directing the airflow. Magnet. And now we go under the screw thing. 
Oh, well, then you gotta undo this bottom, the penetrator that gets the head signals through the sealed enclosure to the outside where the board is. Glued itself on. There's some kind of gasket around it. Yeah. Yeah, Seagate head assembly for two platters, double sided. And the disc platters and the separator between them. And then there's the air filter thing. And then the filter for the outside air to come in. I think, or that might be a desiccant thing to keep it dry. Let's dig into it and find out. Might do both. I think it's an air filter so that the pressure can equalize in the drive but not bring in any dust. Probably comes from that hole there. There you go, that's Seagate drives. And look at a Death Star. Sort of board it's got. Pretty integrated. Infineon. And some other thing for the motor driver. It's got various power supply stuff on it. Oh yeah, and the cache chip Hynix memory on the other side. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. I think that's the head assembly. Got a little cover over it to seal it up. And there was a matching one on the other side. There we go. Hitachi Desk Star Death Star Drive. Pretty similar. Looks like it's got a locking thing. No. It is a landing area like or parking area like the uh, Western Digital Drives did. The edge there. But otherwise pretty similar. Need smaller screwdrivers for that. The air filter. Another good magnet. And two platters, four heads again. That's good, that's Hitachi Drive. Now let's get on to the interesting ones. Got these Velociraptors here. 10,000 RPM drives. Just throw those over there for now. So you got the 150 gig and the 300 gig Velociraptors and then the one terabyte. Presumably these will be both the same inside them. So they come in this ice pack, is that what they call it? The cooling thing. And what I want is these screws because they are... I wonder if they're compatible. Because the other day I mounted up an, a solid state drive in one of these ice packs because it gets too hot. And I had trouble finding screws that are right length, so I should have just stolen them from one of these. Got it here, because I haven't set up the computer yet. But yeah, this uh, U2 drive. Samsung PCIe 4, 7.68 terabyte. It draws about 20 watts, so it gets quite hot. So I've put some sheet of thermal interface material. That stuff under it and then screwed it down into the same holder thing but the screws I found were a bit dodgy and didn't have much thread engagement I've cut that so it can fit into the case that I got for my new computer but maybe I can upgrade it to these screws the problem was the screw holes in this from the bottom were so short you have to use exactly the right length screw otherwise it's not going to work so I'll keep those to the side because they might be better than what's in there. Yeah, but otherwise it's just a regular drive enclosure, see? They only cool two parts, which is where the heat transfers from the motor driver and some other controller chip. And the rest of it's just foam stuff, so I ripped that out. And then put a thermal conductive thing over the whole surface. I've got some more of these things that don't have drives in them, but it's a SAS connector at that end. So I got all excited about using them and then went to plug it in and it doesn't fit. So it's got that joined, so it only fits into backplanes and SAS cables. Anyway, we don't have to worry about that. Let's um, take the drive apart. 
We'll have a look at the board first. And there we go, that's what you're calling a smooth, another smooth chip. Should be the motor driver. And then uh, some Western Digital custom chip is the other thing that's being called by that heatsink. Okay, let's take the top off. It's probably got some hidden screws. It's got these little things. Oh, yeah, there's screws under those as well. Little label things so that they know if someone's been in there. What are the screws under covers on this? Guessing that the one terabyte one will be pretty much the same thing. It's interesting there's that ring thing there. I wonder if that's like a magnetic shield or something. So that doesn't get interfered with when you've got a whole stack of them running next to each other. I think that would be a magnetic screen. I can't think what else it would do. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, it is metal. It's all steel. I think that is a magnetic screen around it to avoid damaging the drive, I guess. Yeah, look at that. Little tiny thing. So this just one platter. Again, it's got that same parking area off to the side. And air filtery things. And this kind of thing there, I guess that's to do with managing the airflow in the drive. I've also got stacks of laptop drives, which would be similar to this, but a bit less hard out. I don't really know what to do with them. I don't know how to test them to see which ones I should keep and which ones I should throw out. What's a good way of testing drives to see if they're in good condition? Mechanical drives. Is there a way of finding out if it's reallocated sectors or not? Yeah, there might be a smaller screw under that. Okay. Do you think that's probably not worth opening that one? Let's open the one terabyte one and we'll see how that differs or is similar. I had a whole stack of these but I sold most of them and I think one of them had something dodgy about it which might be this one and then there's still two others in the cupboard I kept just in case I want them for some reason. This one wasn't wrapped up, this was just loose, just knocking about. <laughs> so maybe it's the one that showed some errors or some other behavior. Yeah, that's got a different thing there. I think that's a smaller screw, maybe. Yeah, those black stickers stick down a lot harder. Is the little silver ones on the other drives just popped off when the screw pulled them upwards? Is that enough stuff undone? There might not have been a screw on that one. Another heavy lid. Oh, that was the vent. That's what that weird thing that was poking up through the lid. Which that doesn't have. So that's the vent. It looks like a camera from a cell phone, doesn't it? But yeah, that's the fresh air input output thing. And some kind of special air filter. Okay. Ah, this has four platters in it. So they had one that was 300 gigs, was it? Or one, yeah, that was the 150 gig. Ah, uh, okay. That's 150 with one platter. Probably the, the 300 would have two platters, they just lower density. Whereas this one terabyte, it's got four platters in it. Four 250 gigs, I suppose. So that's interesting, and it doesn't have that black ring thing that we found in the other one, I suppose because there's no room. Look, that is. That air filter there. Get the magnet off. Same sort of deal. Under that. Oh, you should probably see if the board is the same. Has it got the same stuff on it? No, it's different. Well, the chips are different because the through hole things 
at different sizes there. Oh, it heat sinks in the other direction. Ah, which this one didn't. See, it's got the thermal transfer pad stuff on the top side. See, that one stayed there. Special thermal material. And then there's milled out sections, which that doesn't have. So this is using the drive body to heat sink it, so it probably doesn't need to go in that ice pack holder thing. You can see the, the machining lines there from how they milled that out. The tool path. So it's done with a pretty small cutter that went around. And there's some date stamping stuff. This is 12 there, so maybe it's a 2012 drive. And that says 08, it's so probably a 2008 drive. Or, or the, when the casting was done. Okay. There's the head assembly. Four four platters. What is it? Three? No, oh, it's actually three here. Yeah, I miss miss saw that. There's three platters. Okay, so that means the size is different to what I said before. Well, it must be 300 gigs per platter. Ah, so that means if this one here is a one platter, then they're the same. That's, that means now we've got to take that apart. Oh, look! There is separator things in there that are aluminium, though, rather than plastic. Ah, that's what that extra screw was for over the side. Oh, they're stuck in by that head parking thing. Oh, you can push it out of the way. Yeah, that's interesting. You can just give that a shove. And then you can get the disc out. There you go. So, three platters. Yeah, when these are all fresh and haven't been messed up yet, they'll stick together. Because of their flatness, a vacuum will be formed between them and they'll they'll slide when there's air in there and then they'll stick quite strongly once the air is pressed out from between them. Because the surface is extremely smooth. Alright, that's Velociraptors. Well, we're going to look in this one because I wanted to see whether that is one or two platters. Damn, we've got the cheetah drives. Oh, it's two. Okay, so it is just double the 150. It's not a higher density. Oh, and it looks like it's got that internal separator thing like that. See, those are the screws there that will hold them. I guess there'll be a thicker one. Oh, it's a plastic separator. Okay. There you go. Velociraptor 300 gig platters. Quite thick. Maybe thicker than those ones? Dunno. Well, get rid of that. And we'll do what you've all been waiting for. Let's look inside the C8 Cheetah 15K.7, the 15,000 RPM drives. We'll look at what the board's got on it first. And I reckon they'll have small platters as well, fairly small compared to the standard three and a half inch drives. Because the smaller the platter, the faster you can seek the data because you don't have to wait so long the distance for it to travel all the way around at the outer rim. You can always seek the drives a lot faster when the the data that's in the center of it because it comes around more often. Oh, so that has protrusions that do the heat sinking. There was a BGA chip in there and another smooth chip. 
Quite a lot of similarities. I don't know if those are screws or not. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff under here. That's bigger screws. And oh, that might not be a. Yeah, that one feels like a screw. Yep. It's just really tight. I don't know about these other things. Maybe that was a smaller one. Maybe it's real small. Anyway, let's take the lid off. Can we get the label for one piece? Some more stickers. So they screw down the center of the spindle. Maybe to help make it more rigid when it's going so fast. Yeah, this screwdriver doesn't have the best leverage though to hold on. But yeah, some of them are pretty tight. Okay. Why are there screws there? Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see when we get in what what are those screws doing. Oh, that's long. Okay, let's open it. Oh, there's a air vent thing stuck to the top. Oh, look at that. It's really small. And there's four. And they're really thick. So, are these the same size as what was in the 2x5 inch drives? Almost, they're slightly bigger. Interesting. Oh, those tape holes. No, they're different. Are they? I think that's just the back of the screw that are holding in this penetrator for the head cable, head signals. That thing there seals down to it. Magnet assembly. Ah, so that's what the screws from the top are doing. They're holding this together. Seems stronger than the other ones that we were that we found. Get your fingers in there. It's a pretty thick magnet. I think it is stronger than the other ones. There's the heads. Very the flexible bit on them is very short. Cheetah 15k drive heads. And look at ripped the bit out. Here's the magnet assembly, and we might as well take some of the dry, the platters off this. This does have fairly solid bits of aluminum, yeah, but they've cut it out where they can to reduce the amount. So is the top of that all steel? Sure, it's made of multiple layers again. I think it's a mixture steel and aluminum. Some sort of shielding and some heat dissipation. I wonder if they separate easily. Just thinking about separating, does you get a lot more money for aluminium, especially when it's separated out from other stuff or other types of steel and things, so if it's possible, we'd separate them for recycling. Okay. So that's the aluminium part. And that's the steel part. It's also two layers. So I think they... They laminate layers of steel, so it has a shielding effect on the drive. 
to stop stray magnetic fields from corrupting the data. Because if you've got a stack of them, then they could influence each other potentially. I guess that's the reasoning. There you go, 15k cheetah drive. Oh, and it's plastic separators, not aluminum like that other one was. There you go, they're all stuck together now because I pushed them together and the air got out. So now they've turned into just one solid lump. That won't separate very easily. There you go, unless you get some air in there. So flat that they'll just stick together. And when there's air in there, they'll slide apart. They'll slide very easily upon each other. Great! That's teardown of various hard drives. And I don't know, should we do one more cheap one since I've got a whole it's just stacks and stacks of these things here ready to go. So yeah. Let's just take this one apart just for good luck. It's I think it's a more newer, cheaper version of yeah, those older ones that we took about, SATA interface, not IDE. Yeah, same sort of deal as the others. Is there a date? Says 07 there, I think. Yeah, so pretty old. Just look what were those other Seagate ones. I don't know. They're on the wall on the ground and I can't tell which is which. Oh, 02. Whatever that one was, it's 02, so that's a lot older, but it's still a SATA. Is there a screw in there? Yep. Got peeled off its thing. Yeah, is there something else? Oh, that one isn't out all of the way. Yeah, it's just one platter. It's got a lock. Yeah, it's quite a thin one. Air filter. Ah, oh, there's a scrape on the center there. Quite hard to see it, but there's a line mark, like a mark around there, which must be where that lands and it grinds into the disc there. You can see it now. So that must be where the, the head lands and it's scraped the surface, or it's a surface that doesn't have a coating or a harder coating for the heads to land on safely. Rather, yeah, because you don't really want the head landing where the data is because it will scrape some of it off. So that's all the drives we're going to take apart, but if I can find it just now, I'll find a couple of other exhibits that we can briefly look at. Here we've got, these are from, look how many platters there are. These are Seagate Barracuda drives. That I think is a one gigabyte one. And that might be one of the newer two gigabyte ones. That's a full height or double height, three and a half inch drive, so twice so it's that sort of thickness. And then this is the slightly newer, just regular height, three and a half inch drive. Seagate Barracuda SCSI drives. I used to use both of those until they wore out. And then finally, we've got this from the Dark Ages. So you look at the size difference. This here is a, a full height five and a quarter inch drive from back in the day and I don't know how many this is would be in megabytes because uh, it was in a, some server that I got given a long time ago that was a 386. So I've kept this because it's an exciting thing, ornamental thing. Yeah, the motor's there inside the hub. Same as these. Yeah, that's just a few small connections. There's lots. It's probably got Hall Effect feedback as well as the three phases. But 
Yeah, that's thick drive, high density drive, or high density platters. Bit more exciting than these more modern single platter drives, but it would have cost a lot more. There you go, that's a look inside various computer hard drives from throughout the ages, including super high performance drives and generic cheap drives.